This is Escape Pod. Visit our website at OutbreakPodcast.com. And now here's your hosts, Tony Brown and David Anthony. Hello and welcome out to this special episode of Escape Pod. I'm your host, David Anthony, along with Tony Brown. Tony, what's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's looking down at his phone. Quit surfing porn. I was God. looking at porn. I mean, yeah, yeah, you were. I knew it. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I also want to introduce our panel tonight for the subject, uh, guns uh, and you know, on the movie sets. Uh, we have uh, Dave Snyder special effects makeup artist and a frequent visitor to our podcast hello dave how's it going buddy pretty good how are you guys doing good man yeah there is a fly out there pj sorry about yeah, that yeah it's okay it's all right <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you sent go it out there. here on purpose i did pj <laughs> independent filmmaker pj starks how you doing buddy doing okay and, how are uh, you PJ was having computer problems, so that's why he's actually at the other end of my house in our studio that i had the garage door open today so flies got in yeah it happens. you're welcome Oh, he gets invited to your house. I say, yeah, I got to go. Bye. Um, cool. so, yeah. All righty. I knew we'd get rid of him. All right. And then we have uh, Lewis Cheney, independent filmmaker. Lewis, how are you doing, sir? Doing well, sir. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Awesome. It's a privilege to have you on today, man. I'm really glad you're here. And then, of course, we have Eric Huskison. Just puts his first name as Eric. I'll have to edit that later. I'm just kidding. Hi, Eric. How are you? Independent filmmaker and... um. Let's see, you're a director, you're an author, you're all kinds of special stuff, aren't you? And, and the master of headroom. He is, he is. And let's see, you're also <laughs> definitely an actor, but you also are, uh, like with PJ, you and PJ both uh, own um, um, Blood Moon Pictures. For now. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> hey, for, for at Animal. least tonight. <laughs> Starts already. Oh, too funny. Is that better, PJ? Uh... That's questionable. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being here tonight, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is kind of a, a serious subject. Um, so, um, but uh, because of the tragedy that happened, <laughs> PJ, just you'll be fine. Just I'm like fucking Mike Pence in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All righty then. So uh, <laughs> we're going to go. I have no idea what he's talking about. We're going to play. Um, <laughs> I <do>. Not <laughs> fucking Mike Pence, but uh, I had a, a fly uh, on my head like he did. Anyway. I got you. I got you. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's play the uh, clip. Uh, Alec uh, Baldwin's uh, comments after the tragic shooting on a movie set of Rust. I'm not allowed to make any comments because it's an ongoing investigation. I've been ordered by the sheriff's department in Santa Fe. I can't answer any questions about the investigation. I can't. Okay. It's an active investigation in terms of a woman dying. She was my friend. She was my friend. The day I arrived in Santa Fe to start shooting, I took her to dinner with Joel, the director. We were a very, very, excuse me, we were a very, very, you know, well-oiled crew shooting a film together, and then this horrible event happened. Now, I've been told multiple times, don't make any comments about the ongoing investigation, and I can't. I can't, I can't, that's right. it. And you met with, sorry. What are the questions that you have other than that? You met with the, uh, the, the, the um, I forget her name at the moment, but you met with her family? In the Helena. Day. Yes, her I name met is with her Helena. Husband. If you're spending this much time waiting for us, you should you know, know her, her name. name. Her name is Helena. Helena Hutchins. I met with her husband, Matthew, and her son. Yeah, that's right. And uh, how did that meeting go? Uh, I wouldn't know how to characterize that. Um, they're they're, they're, they're you, mortified. You guys, you, guys so, you know what? You, no details. But do, do me a favor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the question. <clears throat> well, I appreciate that he was probably very upset. The, 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 the guy is overwhelmed with grief. This, this is something that... That, you know, there are incidental accidents uh, uh, on film sets uh, from time to time, but nothing like this. This is a one in a trillion episode. It's a one in a trillion event. And so the, he is in shock. He has a nine-year-old son. You know, we are, you know, in constant contact with him because we're very worried about his family and his, his kid. And uh, as I said, we're, we're, we're eagerly awaiting for the sheriff's department to tell us what their investigation has yielded. What else do you have? Would you ever work on another film set that involves uh, firearms of that nature? I couldn't answer that question. I, I, I really don't have any. I have no sense of that at all. I do know 
that an ongoing effort to limit the use of firearms in, on film sets is something I'm extremely interested in. Yeah, I don't know where you, but remember something that I think is important, and that is how many bullets have been fired in films and TV shows in the last 75 years? This is America. How many bullets have gone off in movies and on TV sets before? How many billions in the last 75 years? And nearly all of it without incident. So what has to happen now is we have to realize that when it does go wrong, and it's this horrible catastrophic thing, some new measures have to take place. Rubber guns, plastic guns, no live, no real armaments on set. That's not for me to decide, it's urgent. It's urgent that you understand, I'm not an expert in this field. So whatever other people decide is the best way to go in terms of protecting people's safety on film sets, I'm all in favor of, and I will cooperate them with that in any way that I can. Okay, so um, the crazy woman running around was actually his wife, uh, Alec Baldwin's wife, and I guess she was trying to do a little um, um, a little covering up for him or trying to maybe censor him a little bit to make sure he didn't say anything out of whack. But he was he wanted to speak his mind, and she wasn't going to stop him, obviously. So, yeah. So anyway, so Dave, um, let's let's go to you first on this, um, since you've uh, you've been on more movie sets um, than all of us combined, and um, to get your thoughts on this uh, on this matter. And that means I go first. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, <laughs> yep, that's where I'm going uh, with you first. Well, my thoughts on this matter are: I've never met Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. I don't know him. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anybody who was on that crew. Um, my takeaway from his interview is you got a guy in shock because he fucking shot and killed somebody. I think he also realizes that at least under his producer umbrella, he's going to be held somewhat liable. Uh, I think his wife was basically running around to try and prevent him from saying anything that might hang himself deeper. You know, he's been told not to talk about it, but at the same time, he's fucking all over the place. And she's just trying to be like, whoa, whoa, don't, you know, let's keep this reined in. I don't think she's crazy yeah. at all. I think uh, um, that's, that's my takeaway from it. Yeah. I don't know. And I think it's too early to start laying blame on anybody in this right. whole thing, because every day that I see it in the news, I hear things that I hadn't heard before. Right. Um, right. And I, I see more and more of the assumptions that people have made and assumptions made on the fact that they don't actually understand how a film set works and what the hierarchy and the chain of command is with weapons. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what got my hackles up is like, you've got all these, armchair experts out there saying this, that, and the other, and even conspiracy freaks coming out of the corners and they don't know shit. They don't know what they're talking about because they don't really understand the infrastructure the way that we all do having made films, worked on films, um, you know, in different capacities. I worked on super low budget stuff. I've worked on very high budget stuff, but um, uh, the, the armchair quarterbacks are what, got me annoyed so right yeah i mean and and there's you know a lot of a lot of comments and misinformation and you know i mean i remember like the day that uh, that it came out uh and there was some cnn reporter and then you know their first comment was you know not since the fatal shooting of brandon lee where he was shot with a live round and it's like that's not exactly true that's, yeah, not it's exactly, nowhere, that's nowhere close to true. right exa exactly <laughs> so but that's but that's that's the that and they, and they just you know rolled with it and just went on with it just like oh. it was a fact and you know and that was gosh you know back in the 80s that happened late 80s i think early 90s uh, 93 no oh, there you go 93 i did so, have uh, friends on that set and they called us at the shop in la from south carolina north carolina wherever they were shooting and basically picked up the phone in the morning and one of my friends said they killed Brandon Lee. So I, I, you know, I had two friends on that show. So that's neither here nor there. It's completely different, unrelated right. accidents. 
So. Right. Exactly. And that's the, but I mean, it's just, you know, they start, I guess, as a, as a new news organization, you, you'd think they would be more responsible to, to get their facts straight before they just start throwing stuff out there for filler or context when the context yeah. wasn't correct at all. So. Well, Lewis Cheney and I have both worked in, you know, <laughs> the news industry and we could both attest to mm -hmm. how uh, things can get exaggerated or uh, changed, misreported. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, in fact, you guys um, work together <clears throat> in, a, in a news organization for, for a while. You're early in your career. So, so that was, uh, sorry, PJ, for the flies out there. There's about to I be a fucking to... fatal shooting of a fly in this room uh, here in about I two seconds. Uh, I understand, <laughs> man. So just, uh, just do the best you can, man. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so anyway, so well, PJ, let's let's go to you. So what um, what uh, what do you I uh, guess garner from uh, from Alex? Um, you know, I guess his uh, explanation of what happened that he could talk about. Uh, now are you are you wanting my opinion on the video directly that we just saw, or kind of just over way. overall? Um, what I mean, obviously, I, I I had I formed an opinion early on, like everybody does. And then as information starts coming out, that opinion changes. I agree with Dave that I think I, I feel at this point that, you know, we should wait until the investigation is concluded before any real opinion can be formed. Um, I do agree with what Alex said that, you know, there there have been a lot the use of guns for a very for since probably since film began they were using weapons of some kind in, in film and the amount of accidental shootings or whatnot that have taken place are very small but i think that the what you get down to it even one should not happen especially because that's the whole purpose of film it's make-believe exactly and make make-believe should never result in 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 the death of anyone so um i feel like at this point we, we are far enough along to where even if you use real firearms, you never have to actually discharge those firearms on set. And when we, um, I'll just use this as an example. When, when Eric and I did 13 Slays Till Christmas most recently, the sequence uh, Christmas to Dismember had sheriffs and we had an actual sheriff on set and the main actress in, in the film she's holding a real Glock the entire time. The, the thing was though, is at no point in time was it ever loaded. Um, before we, before the gun was ever put into her hands, uh, Brad Youngman was the, was the sheriff on set and he was in control of all the weapons. Um, he would show us that the chamber was empty. He would take the clip out, show that it was empty. And then he would get the gun ready and then show us that it was on safety. And that was, every time before it got put into her hand. And then of course, as soon as we were done with a shot, the gun would then be returned to him in between setups and things. And um, while we used an actual firearm on set, two of them actually, at no point in time was there any actual live rounds on set or used because all the, the, the recoil and the discharge and everything that you see in the film, that was all done in post. And I feel like nowadays that, that's being done more and more, but just from a safety standpoint, to me, it just makes sense to kind of do. Now I do realize that it doesn't probably, it may not look as good. And a lot of the time you can tell a digital discharge of a firearm versus the real thing. But at the same time, if it comes down to just, just pure protection, it just, to me, it makes sense to, to go the digital route and do everything in post once the film is completed. Yeah. Anybody got comments about that or? Yeah, I go along with what PJ's talking about there. I think we are at a, at a point, even when I did a film that had some gunfire in it back, I don't know, uh, 2019 is when I released, or excuse me, not 2019, 2010s when I released the film, 20, 2009, something like that. And I had blanks being fired on set. But I have been raised around firearms. I know about firearms. I know about safety of firearms. If you take one of my kids right now who are 21 and 25, you go to hand them a gun, the first thing they'll tell you to do is clear it, like PJ was describing. Show me it's empty. 
And when I've had those on set, I'm the only person I trust with it because I make sure, first of all, not one live round goes on set. There's not an actual bullet there. There are blanks. And I know what those blanks are. I know how they can throw powder. I know if they can throw a wad. They are never pointed at my actors. If they're pointed and fired towards the camera, the camera is locked down and no one is anywhere near it in case anything comes out of that barrel. But in this day and age, even back then, I had one part where I wanted a girl to fire a gun. It was inside of a house. I didn't want to fire it. So we had her fake it. I had to teach her what recoil was because that's the hardest thing. If you take a fake gun and it doesn't give you the, the recoil that a real firearm does, you have to teach that. <clears throat> and if they're going to teach it, send them to the firing range. Let them experience that. See what that feels like. But even on a cheap, and this was back, guys, when, what was it? Uh, I was using uh, Premiere. I was using Premiere. The first round of Premiere. And I managed to do digital gunshots back in 2009. And I'm an independent film producer. Hollywood and bigger budget people, I think, could afford that. And it's certainly for the safety. There should never be a real gun on set anymore there just shouldn't be there's no reason for it right right but good I points agree. lewis so tony do you have any comment or anything to add to this yeah i just I, i'm kind of like lewis like i grew up around guns i love guns i love everything around guns but the biggest thing that my 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 father and you know my older brother taught me was you never point a gun at anyone even if it's unloaded just right. just to be safe you just you just don't you know, and and with all the technology, you know, that there is and and yet, even if they, you know, they they don't exactly get the recoil right. You know, a lot of people aren't going to realize that because they're not gun people. So I, you know, I just I think we can forego not using real guns on set ever again, even before this. I, it was just always weird to me. No, because even blanks, you know, even blanks, like like Lewis said, it, it's going to fire something out of there, and and I want to say that maybe back in the early '80s there was an actor that put a gun to his head that had a blank in it, and he actually John Eric Hexum. killed himself. Yeah, yeah. John you know, Eric even was a blank, you know that. Yeah, that's that's still deadly, right. you know. Yeah. So I just I, I just don't think live guns should ever be used around that situation at all. Yeah, well, Eric. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to make light of what what happened. I mean, somebody died, somebody got really hurt, but all of you all are here have been on a set, and no matter what safety precautions you have, no matter no matter what experts you have there with you, accidents <clears throat> happen. I mean, there was an incident years ago where somebody got decapitated by a helicopter. I remember what film that was. Twilight Zone. It was a Twilight Zone. Okay, yep. thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, and you've got people like Tom Cruise that does his own stunts, who's not really a stuntman, and he's injured himself. There's been stuntmen died over the years from doing stunts. Okay, well, that's stunt work. But going back to the gun situation, an accident with a gun, you know, two people got hurt by one shell, one yeah. casing. So, I mean, like what you are talking about, I mean, CGI doing effects, the after effects, the post effects like that. Look, a lot of them look like you can't even tell. Somebody that does movies sometimes you can't even tell. It's going so fast anyway. And if you're just John Q. Public watching a movie, you're not paying attention to that probably. And if you've got an expert there, you can take the actor, actress to, like you said, like Lewis said, to a gun range, teach them about where you call, let them shoot a few rounds and get the feel for it. And you've got what you need. You know, stunt work is still going to be there, but you don't always have to have a gun with a shell in it. You know, right. stunt work's still going to happen. People are still going to get hurt. I mean, even with all the safety precautions there, people are going to get hurt. But this, people are, it's not one-time incident now. And right. uh, it, it just, yeah, I, I don't, you know, you can have a real gun there, but there's guns that look as real fake these days. Yep. And with the post stuff, mm -hmm. and there, there's no point in it. Yeah. So with that said, um, uh, Lewis um, has a couple of examples that he was showing us earlier. Lewis, if you don't mind um, bringing yeah. some of those up. This is an air, is like an airsoft gun. It shoots little tiny rubber pellets. The only way you can tell that it's not real is the orange on the tip. Right. But this looks like a fully running M16 and it's even the cartridge comes out and everything. 
but I've collected some over the years to use on my movies for exactly that reason. That's been a long time ago when I started doing this. That looks like a Beretta nine millimeter all the way down. You can see down the barrel, but you see the orange on there. This is a CO2 pistol. And I'm going to warn my family I'm pulling the trigger on a CO2 pistol, which will you know, it'll make some noise for you if you wanted that. But I wouldn't advise it either because it's still something can come out of it. This one, and I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Tony, if you would not mind, if you could throw us back up together. This is just a toy plastic gun, but I want you to see what it looks like by comparison. And this is the real an deal. actual real gun. And this uh, is nothing but just a toy. Plastic and, and light. Like, I even went back and painted stuff on it to give it look like it was the, the cylinder. And it's harmless. So, you know. It's a, <laughs> yeah, what's up, PJ? <clears throat> <laughs> He's you know, cheap shooting for the fly, PJ. It's okay. <laughs> Please do. You know, <laughs> I, I've got to I got to add this to something Eric was talking about. I agree with you on stunts, and I was a, always been a big fan of stunt people, and I admire the heck out of them. And there is an inherent danger in a stunt. I mean, you go back and look at somebody like Dar Robinson, who was killed on the motorcycle drive-by, and the man had done amazing stunt work and created safety devices for stunt people, and he dies in a simple motorcycle ride-by, lost control, and lost his life. But Stunts are done by professionals who train a lot, and there is an inherent risk in that. And if you're going to have certain stunts, you know, cars rolling over and stuff. I know when I was down with uh, Dave on Stand Against Evil, they had a guy down there who rolled a car. And his, I think he said his son didn't want to be there the day he rolled the car. He said, Dad, I can't watch you do that. It's too scary. And that's one difference because you do have those live elements like that you're going to put into a movie. But if there's, when it comes to a gun in this day and age, there's just no point in having any of them on set that's real. Because while injuries with stunts are not something you can prevent, injuries with guns is 100% is 100% preventable. Agreed. Wow. I thought I was going to be the only one here saying that. <laughs> I figured everybody else was going to be going, why do you want Hollywood to ban guns? I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, wow, there's no counterpoint here. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think we well, I think we solved the problem. We're all good all right. to go here. Good night, folks. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, to, to, to be honest, I mean, all right. So Tony, let's say, let's, let's just say this. Come he owns several guns and he, mm -hmm. you know, and he carries guns with him because it's his right all the time. So, I mean, he is a gun user, a, you know, gun toter <laughs> as it were, but, but, but it's common sense to Tony. And, you know, this isn't a, I mean, there are people out there that, you know, that definitely have the uh, opinion that, you know, well, if you, if you ban live rounds on movies or that's, you're coming for our guns next, you know, that's, that's not the case. Um, I thought Obama but, uh, was but, supposed to do that. Yeah, he tried. And, <laughs> I guess uh, he didn't get around to it in almost yeah, a decade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there are a lot of other people that are trying it now. And of course this comes right. up. You know, with people saying, you know, well, they should, you know, all guns should be pulled and blah, 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 which is, you know, which is the, uh, say it uh, nicely, is the left's uh, opinion on, on a lot of the all of the gun um, parts. But Can I um, comment on that? Yes, of course. Okay. Well, I'm not, myself, I'm not a gun guy. I don't right. own a gun. I'm also not opposed to to guns in any way shape or form i think right. that there could possibly be better legislation oh, to keep yeah. certain guns out of certain hands mm -hmm. and i'm always disturbed when i see the pushback against that and that's what i'm perceiving with this idea that maybe hollywood is going to say we don't need real guns anymore i think a lot of people who are very pro-gun and again i got nothing against that right just not my thing. But I think a lot of people are going to see that as threatening to be a slippery slope. Oh, my goodness. If if we take guns out of the, you know, off of movie sets, then we're going to have to take them out of schools and churches. I, you know, it, what's next? Right. Right. Uh, that was well, a joke. I mean, that no one seemed to get. <laughs> All right. Not I'll get my coat, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, um, 
my, my mom and my mom and dad met in the army. My dad was an MP in the military. My dad was a police officer for a while after he got out. So I grew up around guns. I hunted. I have guns. Um, of course, my dad, you know, knocked me upside the head if like, you know, like Tony said, you know, you don't ever point a gun. You point it at the ground. He said, if you're not shooting, you don't even need to have the gun holding it or in your hand. Yeah. And that, that's just the way I was taught. Um, so I am a gun guy just because of the way I was raised. Um, and I, I'm tired of all the fighting about guns, uh, you know, Dave, like you're talking yeah. about. I mean, I'm not I'm not against anybody that's against guns. That's everybody's right to be. And I'm not one of those radicals that's out here fighting. But I, I agree with you what's going to happen. These radicals are going to go, oh, they're just trying to take our guns away. This is just another ploy. And it, it shouldn't be about that. I mean, this is yeah, just a I safety issue, it. but you are going to have your few that are probably going to, oh, this is just the first step of what they're trying to do to us. But, you know, well, the legis <laughs> legislation has to be there. Too many crazy people have guns. Too many people that don't need guns have guns. And there are well, some guns yeah. out there that don't need to be in people's hands. When it comes ahead, to Dave. legislation... There is a there's a currently some public official in California who's trying to make it a California state law to ban all. And I think that's a bunch of horseshit. The film industry has a very long industry of being able to police itself. And if the mentality of the people who work in that industry is geared toward we don't really need blanks on set, you know, you can have. You can have all the training in the world, but you've got the human element. The training that goes into the procedure that goes into using guns on film sets, I've seen a million times, again, from low budget to high budget, and it's always the same. There's either the prop master, if it's a smaller show, or if it's a bigger show with a lot of guns, they'll hire a separate armorer. The gun is in the possession of the armorer or is locked up at all times until they're ready to shoot. That means cameras are ready, lights are set, nothing else fucking around to be done. We're 100%. The armorer brings the gun over. Usually it's the first AD and the actor standing next to one another. The armorer comes open, uh, com comes over. If it's a revolver, they open it or whatever they show clear if it's a, an automatic they eject the magazine or whatever like i said not a gun guy so maybe i'm getting some of these terms wrong but <laughs> that's all right they basically demonstrate that there are no rounds and that the barrel is clear and they show this to because the first ad is the one responsible for safety on set overall like which i think is ridiculous we can get into that later but right. it's supposed to be shown to the first AD and the actor, and then you go. No more fucking around with, oh, let me just adjust that light or anything. It's like, you go. And I've never felt unsafe on a set in terms of guns. I have felt unsafe in terms of other things, especially in other countries. But um the, the problem with all of that is it works really well, but you got the human element. And on this show, I think they were trying to move too fast. Yep. I think they had an armorer who was not experienced enough. I think they had a first AD who was overbearing and was just like, let's go, 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 go. Let's get the day. I got to get the day. Yeah. And I think it was just, um, uh, what do you call it? Perfect storm of fuck ups. Right. Several errors that, uh, that just lended to each other. Instead yes. of having the safeguards that were there and right. should have been in place for checks and balances at each point of the sh the, the filming, you know, before yep. the gun got into her hand, there are multiple links in the chain that yes. were missed, skipped, or not Dis done their due diligence. They were exactly disregarded. Um, I do. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead Dave. I just got to throw this out there, though. Yeah. I, I agree with all of that, and I think there's a lot of error in here and it's you know chris we're still waiting to hear everything and i don't want to put anything out there to speculate but the big question for me and i know dave and i have talked about this it comes down to me one simple thing why in the hell was there a live round anywhere near this fucking set to start with 
Yeah, there should right. never have. There might have been blank sunset. I mean, this is not like the Brandon Lee case where, you know, you had the guy who had made the bullets and he did them wrong and the thing wound up in the barrel and then they put the blank behind it, pretty much turned it into a live round. Yeah. This from what they're describing thus far, now it could come out differently, but what they're saying so far, and, and I'm hearing, is it was a live round. Yeah. And the under no circumstances, yeah. 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 I've got the under no circumstances it should it ever be that, you know, it should never have a live round on set. Period. It shouldn't have been there. And to me, right, that's no, the that, biggest question that comes down to is how in the hell did that happen? Uh, but aside yeah, from all the, the, the steps you take to prevent something from happening injury wise with a blank, that just was mystifies me. No, I agree. Cause it's rule number one in the, yeah. you know, whatever they call the bylaws. And cause you know, when you get a call sheet and there's going to be gunfire on set the next day or that day, there is supposed to be stapled to the call sheet copies of, of every safety bulletin. And that means if they're using smoke on set, there's a safety bulletin. If they're shooting live rounds on set, if they're using fire on set or making an explosion, you know, there's a safety bulletin always attached. One of the things that I heard on this show, Rust, is um, nobody got those. Nobody got those safety bulletins. So, you know, already the first tragic misstep, you know, into what happened. Right. So there definitely is going to, I have a feeling, is going to uncover multiple violations of things that should have been in place. Yeah. That aren't. Yeah. But let me let me read you all this. Um, and Dave, you can probably attest to this, whether this is accurate or not, uh, as far as th that you're aware of. Um, there is no definitive set of regulations on the use of firearms across the film industry. According to the AP News Agency, the U.S. Federal Workplace Safety Agency does not regulate gun safety on set, and many states leave it to the industry to create, excuse me, to create and follow its own rules. Uh, that I cannot attest to because that that is not my, that's right. not what I do. Right. I do know I've heard, you know, some of these armchair quarterback saying that OSHA, you know, OSHA manages everything else, but not the film industry. Bullshit. I've seen shows <laughs> shut down because OSHA came in. Somebody made a complaint. Right. You know, occupational safety and health, whatever it is. You know, they right. came in and they shut the fucking show down. So OSHA right. very much, uh, every government uh, regulatory is the same for the film industry. Nobody's getting exemptions except... When you've got a low budget thing and you've got cheap ass producers and you've got young, new, inexperienced people on set who can very easily be pushed around and manipulated, that's when you get the safety violations. And I, I think that's what happened, you know, on this show, on that film. Well, let me, um, let me play the, um, um, it's just a quick, uh, less than two minute clip of the, um, this was a few days after uh, the incident uh, of the sheriff's department and what the investigation has found up to this point. Uh, let's see here. Execution of search warrants, we have collected about 600 items of evidence. These include, but are not limited to, three firearms, approximately 500 rounds of ammunition and several pieces of clothing and accessories. We believe that we have in our possession the firearm that was fired by Mr. Baldwin. This is, the fire, this is the firearm we believe discharged the bullet. We also believe that we have the spent shell casing from the bullet that was fired from the gun. The actual lead projectile that was fired has been recovered from the shoulder of Mr. Souza. The projectile was recovered by medical personnel where he was being treated and turned over to the sheriff's office as evidence. We regard this specific spent casing and recovered projectile to be the live round that was fired from the re revolver by Mr. Baldwin. We have recovered what we believe to be possible additional live rounds on set. All the previous mentioned items, along with other items of evidence, <coughs> will be submitted to the FBI crime lab in Quantico, Virginia, 
for analysis. We suspect that there was other live rounds that were found on the set. I won't comment further on how they got there. That's still part of a, a this, this investigation is active, so I won't comment on how they got there. But we know we suspect that they are there. The bullet was found in the director's shoulder that was recovered at the hospital. Well, we know it was a lead projectile. It's still to, do, to be determined by the ballistic analysis by the FBI crime lab exactly uh, what the weight of that bullet is. Uh, maybe uh, whether or not it was fired from that actual firearm, there'll be uh, the riflings and things will be uh, tested and uh, and compared. So there's a lot of testing that, that needs to be done to ensure that that projectile left that firearm. So yeah, that's, um, that's from the Sheriff's Department there in that county. And uh, wow, over 500 live rounds on set. Well, he didn't say 500 live rounds. He said, he said 500, 500 rounds, rounds, some of rounds, which yeah. they oh, think of which may be live. live. I don't yeah, think good. a count has come out as far as how many actual live rounds. Here's where I got kind of confused by what he said, though. When he started out, he said that they found he, – he made it sound like they did, in fact, find other live rounds on set. And then in that subsequent follow-up, he he made he said suspected live rounds or whatever the word terminology was that he used, which made it sound like it's possible there were live rounds. So that's is any was anybody else catch that and get kind yeah. of confused? This, well, the my curiosity would be what's Good. the date on that? Uh, what's the date on that? Um, how that long interview? ago was that? Yeah, that was two days ago. Oh, okay. I would have thought that was more like a week and a half ago. But sorry, Lewis, go ahead. No, that's okay. The terminology, I think, is where this is becoming cloudy with what's being reported by law enforcement, what's being reported by the media, is you get down to the term live round. Is a blank considered a live round? In my opinion, yes. It fires and discharges something. Gases, yes. mm -hmm. powder, wad, gotcha. air. That could be considered a live round. A bullet could be considered a live round. This is a fully, you know, a full bullet. There's a difference there because you got the lead on it. So when he says that, he's not really clarifying what they found. So I agree with PJ. There's some confusion there, but I think gotcha. it comes down to terminology of what they're calling alive. Well, yeah. I, I think listening to that, a lot of what's going on here is because this is an ongoing investigation. And I, I before I go any further, I have to say, I did not know there was a live round. That's the first I've heard of this. Tells you how I'm out from what's going on in the world. But I didn't know there was a live round. I, first, I'd heard of that. But I didn't listen either. To, listening to what he said, it's just like anybody that gets up on a mic that is trying to tell a story about something. He's limited to what he can say because yeah. it's an ongoing investigation investigation. Because if you go back and listen to that, he goes, we have found what we believe or what I believe is a live round or I believe right. is the gun or we believe is the gun. So right. they really right. don't know at this point. <laughs> he can only say so much because it's still an ongoing investigation. So, I think that whole thing that he just said is just he had to say something because the media was waiting. But I don't really think he told us anything, really. I, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. That's yeah. why I yeah. said I think it's it's the, Maybe I the played, wisest sorry. course of action <laughs> is to wait until the investigation <laughs> is done, right. you know, before right. anybody starts building a gallows. Yeah, yeah. look, and entertainment tonight had to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. he yeah. said he said, I believe or we believe like six times in that whole thing. Which means they don't know because yeah. it's still under investigation. Right. And that was my confusion because that right. was what he followed up with. But he was very matter of fact right. in, the, in the opening statements <laughs> and then followed it up with a we believe, I believe, alleged. Well, I, think, um, you know. I think the fact that they turned all the evidence over to the FBI means that they're pretty much – they are not the <laughs> they're right, not the right. investigative source <laughs> anymore. Right, you know, if right. They, if they find something else on the ranch, you know, then okay, they're there. But this is basically in the hands of the FBI now. So yeah, they the keep interviewing this guy, but he's not going to know any more new information. I don't think. Right. right. Basically, I think if the FBI is now involved, it's bad. <laughs> well, apparently the FBI is doing tests on, um, you know, whatever they recovered in terms of whether they were live rounds or right. blanks or dummies or whatever. But that leads me to believe that that local sheriff, and I keep seeing this, uh, I guess, the, the DA. District attorney? Yes. Yeah. The, the one with the short blonde hair. 
the female yeah mm-hmm. yeah who keeps showing up and making statements and you can tell she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about but right you she's know. been on a couple of like cnn and fox and a couple of different yes. shows yeah so she's she's been there you know because i guess it's a, it's a news story so they're just trying to pull as much as they can yeah well what the hell else happens in new mexico <laughs> sorry <laughs> no no <laughs> uh, they don't even have bigfoot <laughs> there's aliens oh that's right they got roswell fuck <laughs> oh shit so yeah so this was um and we can continue talking but i just was going to play this for a minute this is the i thought you were showing a video of bigfoot there for a second yeah i was like oh that's where the aliens are hold up that's where the aliens are at dave Dave, you made bigfoot didn't you Uh, Uh, i did i i've made a couple of bigfoots (laughs) bigfoot big feet big feet yeah you did you did a uh you did one well it wasn't bigfoot it was a uh an orangutan or something around here and entered a contest if i remember correctly uh, yeah, not really an orangutan. It was just like a generic kind of crazy ape. Yeah, it was an ape. Uh, yeah, I just remember that because I remembered you showed me how you did the hands inside, and it was really cool how how you did that. It looked looked really cool. Eric, that yeah, was well, just supposed the, to be uh, between the two of you. So <laughs> that was all on the coattails of others. So <laughs> oh. I didn't invent anything; just copied, which is the best way. There you go. Well, there you go. It was still cool to me. I'd never seen it. Well, cool. Yeah. There's smoking remnants of that that still exist. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> David, late breaking news. There's now two flies in here. Oh, boy. Sweet. So. PJ, it's called Soap and Water, buddy. Yeah. I've yeah, started your mom using, was telling uh, me about that last night. Yeah, was she? Holy <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I That's started funny. using uh, cleaning products instead of like Raid and stuff like that because it kills them just as dead and it's nowhere near as toxic for me to <laughs> breathe afterwards. Yeah. So. Yeah. All yeah, right, I found well, an article here, guys, yeah. too, while we were talking about this and you were talking about what the sheriff said. I looked up something here. The New York Times said the ammunition recovered included a mixture of blanks dummy rounds and what the sheriff's department suspects to be live ammunition. So it, it, they did do a little more clarification in print here than what that sound bite gave. So like I said, it just, it's that confusion on what's considered live that I think is causing it. And also the fact that they're saying it was a 45 caliber bullet, which is heavy duty stuff. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. What is the yeah. difference between a blank and a dummy round? I, it's, I'm, I don't understand the difference there. Okay, I think a lot of us know who wants to take this on. Lewis, you're yeah, more gun uh, savvy than I. So, well, from my understanding of a dummy round, and I'll show you what I've got right here, and I'll bring it up to the camera so you guys can see. Yeah. This is something I have a friend who does reloads for ammunition. Right. He makes his own ammunition. Correct. This round, which is going to be kind of blurry here, but this is, I believe, a what is this? A 38? Yeah, it's a 38 caliber round. What he did is he he had the casing and he had the lead and the primer in the back, which is your cap, right. that sets it all off, all right? Right. You see how that one has been popped. It, right. It's indented, which means the firing pin has hit it. So there's no way that this could go off because right. there's no there's no primer in there. So that's a dummy This round. is completely empty. Right. It's a dummy round. So I can show it in somebody's hand or being loaded into a gun. And it's, right. it has no way that it can hurt anybody. But still, yeah, this it's use this kind this close-ups. kind of round right here should have been made as something like somebody else should make one that looks like this and not even be real. It should just look like one, but be made right. as something else where there's no chance of it. Because that's what happened in the Brandon Lee case was the right. primer got left on and dislodged the lead into the barrel. Then when the blank came in, so that's the difference in that. If this were a fully operational shell, which I don't have one of to show you, it would be. I have one, Lewis. Go right ahead. Show it. The difference of what we're see, talking about there at the end. You guys can see. Let me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, flat. It is. It's not shiny. indented. It hasn't it's been fired. Here, I'll, um, uh, let me get. Let me get some good light on there. So it's. Um. You were. You were good, dude. We were. Yeah, see, yeah you really. were. You were good there in the beginning. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There so you see go. there. Yep. That's like Lewis was showing that little dimple that in the one Lewis has is where the firing pin. 
ignites the the primer right. and this one is a live round so this will once i put this in my firearm it will shoot out you know a live round the one that dave and lewis has it's already been fired the primer yeah. there's nothing in there to ignite the gunpowder in the shell which will release <laughs> dave and, just and had PJ to had PJ. <laughs> Yeah. Dave just had to out PJ's everybody show his bigger, is, you know, a little different. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was know, just that uh, that's a blank round that I kept as a souvenir from a movie. It came out of, you know, one of these big fucking <laughs> guns. Oh yeah. Big big fucking bastard, but you can see it was a blank because it was crimped right. on the end. It never yep. had a um um I don't know, what do you call it? A tip, a lead, a wad. Yeah, they had a wad. Not even a, well, it probably had a wad. It didn't have a bullet. It didn't have a right. projectile. There you go. You know, and like oh, it had a wad. Saying, oh, it had a wad. <laughs> and now that wad is mine. Yeah, that, yeah, PJ's here. <laughs> Someone blew that wad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. That's all I got. Well, the other. The You'll other be here all I week. Try the buffet. To, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to touch on briefly, and I wanted to touch on it with you guys because we're all in the film world. Um, what is your definition of a prop gun? Um, not to not to pick on anybody, but PJ. <laughs> I mean, in my in my if I was gonna, I would say a prop gun would be like an airsoft gun. It's, it's, you know, but then again, even that can still shoot a projectile. So maybe a prop gun would be something that's maybe looks like a real gun, but it's made out of rubber or has no inner workings whatsoever to allow it to fire a, a projectile whatsoever. So I would say that's probably more along the lines of a prop gun would be something that's used strictly for visuals, a visual purpose, but fires no projectile. That, that's that's what I would say is a prop gun. Yeah, we have we have a couple of plastic guns that we've used <clears throat> on set that are just made to be replicas of a real gun, but they're plastic and they have the like mm -hmm. orange tip, like Lewis showed earlier. Sure. And um, mm -hmm. what what we did is we just poured spray black spray paint on them. <laughs> so I've done the, the same thing. Or black uh, magic marker. Yeah. yeah, so it does, so it looks more mm -hmm. real, even though it's still fake. There's nothing put in it, nothing taken out. It's just a gun held up, and if they do do a recoil like they're actually shooting it, we just do post with the, the flash and stuff. So that's I, just something that looks like a real gun, but it's not. Yeah. Louis? <laughs> I, I agree with him. I mean, just the guns that I showed you a while ago are all plastic, and when right. it comes to doing digital, one of the things that cracks me up, and I've seen this particularly in low-budget stuff, is, again, because people don't know firearms. When you fire a gun, particularly indoors, it lights up the entire room. It doesn't just light up just <laughs> off the tip of the gun. Yeah. So if you're going to do a digital effect with that, you've got to make it look like for that split second that that fire is on there, that the entire room and the people and everybody else are being lit up by yeah. And then like a strobe in a, light. In a, mm -hmm. Yeah. What I did years ago with one, we, which I actually used a real gun in that. I used a blank in that one, too. But I knew my actress was going to be in, in the line of fire because I couldn't get around it. I set it. I set it up and locked the camera off. And back then, before we had garbage mats and the stuff we can play with now, PJ, I know you know about those. Mm -hmm. Before we could do garbage mats, I had to go to the station and have them do this, basically, a, a, a same thing, basically a garbage mat. And what happened was when my actor fired the gun, that box lit up before I had my actress over here that was the other half that I had shot, the room didn't light up. So I had to go back and put one frame of orange over that. And then to show my bad guy being shot, I took the flash off of my 35 millimeter camera, put an orange gel on it, had the camera pointed at the actor and fired the, the flash from behind camera. So it lit up the whole room at him and he just took the hit. So there's right. all kinds of little things you could do like that too that are completely safe using a flash that nobody's going to get hurt with. But I agree. I think any of those plastic guns, rubber guns, you think about, Dave, you've seen them in movies, I'm sure, on props where they've got, I know, like rubber skillets to whack people with, rubber yeah, guns to whack them. people with. Yeah, I've made so, them. 
anything like that, I think, is a far better way to go than having anything live or real on that set. Well, the reason I ask a question is because I, I think the term prop gun is being misused, certainly in the media, as all these different experts are coming out trying to explain mm -hmm. maybe this, maybe that. In my understanding, and in all my years working on whatever, a prop is a prop. A prop, the definition of a prop is anything that an actor handles. Doesn't matter what it is. A watch, a glass of wine, a gun. There's no such thing as a prop gun, meaning a, a gun that's not able to fire. It doesn't matter if it's plastic or rubber. Doesn't matter if it's a real gun that's been modified to only shoot blanks. It doesn't matter if it's a real gun that can shoot anything. If it's in the hands of the prop department, if it's anything that an actor is going to handle, it's a prop. So when you say prop gun, you might as well be saying prop watch, prop wine. glass of wine, prop mm -hmm. shoe. You know, so these are the kind of things that have sort of been annoying me as I've been listening to these experts, you know, right. uh, scream about all this shit. Um, yeah, because because by what by your term, what you're saying, you're right, is because it could be a gun that does fire blanks or it could be a rubber gun, if you put yes. it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's I guess prop. it is mis it is mis yeah, conceiving the of what it really is. Because well, a lot of people out there probably think a prop gun is a gun that will fire. Or that's that not a what I think prop it is. Gun is a right. prop gun that won't fire. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. From and this, I, I don't from, think that's the case. A prop is a prop. So from what I, I was going to say, Good what point. I'm taking away from this is that it sounds like us in the indie world have put far more thought into prop gun than the industry concept of prop gun. I mean, am I, uh, you mean in terms of nomenclature or I don't know, I guess, I, I, you know, I guess when I like I said, or I, we've all said when I think prop gun, I think fake gun. And I mean, is, is that it? I mean, I haven't worked in the industry. You've actually worked in the industry. So with, I mean, when in on, on a set, you're saying that a prop gun is whatever gun is in the hands of the actor. It's yes. just considered a prop. Is that what, is, am I? A, a prop gun is whatever item is in the prop department that is then handed to an actor to do whatever. Right. If they're going to do a stunt, it's going to be a rubber gun. If they're going to shoot a blank, it's going to be a gun that might be modified to only shoot blanks. It may be an actual, you know, full-fledged weapon. But it's yep. still a prop gun because it is a prop within the props department. Gotcha. Now, again, okay. that's, that's right. my definition of it. There may be, you know, you might go to the New York union and they're like no a prop gun is only a non-functional right. i get what you're saying gun. right i'm just saying this is how i know it from my experience and when i hear people referring to it uh along with so many other things incorrectly kind of gets my hackles up because it's like you know nobody nobody puts this forward with a i think or maybe it's always this very declarative this is what happened why the fuck would he pull a gun and point it at an, at somebody. Right. You know, right. now a week later, we understand that he was doing a cross draw, pulling a weapon out of a, out of a holster while seated in a pew and, yep. you know, taking it toward camera camera. The fucking thing went off. I get, I get what you're saying. You're saying is that a prop, no matter what type of gun it is, is a prop. But in the media, they're saying, prop gun making it think it it's something other than it is making light of it almost yes well, yeah i don't know so much that they're making light of it they're just okay. um well not light of it i wasn't uh, I, but they're you're saying it's a lot broader mean. thing and they're just saying all guns are prop guns and you're saying no they're props but they're different types of guns they're generalizing it as one type of gun and they could be different types of guns on set well 
that, there, that there's no such thing as a prop gun. Right. Anything yes. that an actor touches is the prop right. And that goes yes. back to what I'm talking about. With It's where you, all this confusion comes. And like Dave said, it's not the people who truly know that are often talking. It's because of the terminology that's out there and getting used often wrongly. And that's just not making it any easier to understand any of this either. And right, it's not right. helping anybody, I think, in that case. Well, well by what, started, what, go ahead. sorry. Well, I was going to say, no, by no, what, Dave, what, what Dave just said was, you know, you said what one production's definition of prop gun is, is going to different than what maybe like this union's definition. So really, I <laughs> guess the, the real issue is that there doesn't seem to be a clear definition, even within our own industry. And that too is creating a problem because I mean, we all kind of had a similar, a similar idea, like what prop gun meant to me. I, I went from, well, plastic gun to something that doesn't fire a projectile at all. And then right. when you all followed it up, it was just like, well, it's a plastic gun. So even here, we, we all kind of had a different yeah, idea right. of what True. we would consider a prop gun. Yeah. So maybe and, there needs and, to be a clearer definition just in general. I agree. I mean, I can only speak to my mm -hmm. experience on the shows that I've worked on and I don't deal with guns. So, you know, I just pick this up peripherally. Right. But yeah, I've the, termino never the terminology that. prop gun just needs to go away, basically. Right. Uh, I just think um, a prop is a prop. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right. if you're right. going to say prop gun, you might as well say prop watch. Right. Prop, prop shoe. Watch, prop glasses. Or, yeah. yeah right. Prop glass of wine. You know, it's, yep. it's, it's a term that like I said, it may mean something different in the independent world, which I'm not opposed to at all, or on the East Coast. You know, I've done shows in New York. I've done shows on the East Coast. But I've I've never, like, uh, you know, tried to, um, you know, track that down. What's your definition of props? What's your definition right. of prop gun? You know, because right. right. there's been no de I've, need to. I don't deal I've never guns. had it presented to me that way, so I understand what you're saying. That makes sense. Well, when I first started talking about this, we were we were talking about the uh, or I kind of briefly mentioned that um, there was a, a CNN reporter that um, their miscommunication to me um, was the lumping in of this incident with, you know, not since the Brandon Lee getting shot on set yeah. with a real live round. And it's like, and then and then they just they glossed over it. They went on, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, Brandon, Brandon Lee was shot with a real gun, and that's in somebody's head now. Everybody that listened to the show that doesn't yeah. know any better, and they just go on with their their story because they're just trying to fill it or you know make it relevant to somebody you know to to the story. But by doing that, they're not they're not being truthful, or they're not or they're ignorant of their own research. Uh, in that, because we talked earlier, Lewis uh, mentioned it as well, that what happened to Brandon um, was not uh, a real gun at all. It was, uh, you know, mistakes that happened that it was know. a real gun. No, it right. was a real gun. Okay. Yeah, real it gun. was a real gun. Yeah. It but, but, but it wasn't a loaded round of bullet put in there and then he was it was shot at him. Correct. In essence, in essence, it became a, it became that. Because okay. the lead was lodged in the barrel, and then the blank was put behind the lead. So while yeah. it wasn't completely attached, they were just separated by a little bit, because right. the the lead had become dislodged into the barrel. So in in essence, he was shot with a live round, right? Because they basically created one accidentally in that situation. Yeah, he right. was shot with a real gun, but it yeah. wasn't intentionally put a put a put a right. bullet in and shoot him. That's the yeah, it sounds like the difference, right? The difference between this and that from what they're saying and what we're hearing is that this was an actual full on live round and it wasn't the same situation as happened. Brandon, I understand what you're saying. Right, and part of that, I think, too, I think part of that, too, David, to me is and Dave and I both worked in media and mm -hmm. particularly on the local level, at least in my time in media, we really, really work to stay in the middle and try to tell everything fairly. And there's right. so much out there now that's political agenda. There's so much out there that is speculative and there's so much out there that is sensationalized that if they can latch on to anything that they think will get people's ear, get them you know, fired up, they'll do it. Yeah. And I think that's also just making things, just adding to the pissivity of everybody around the situation. Yep. Yep. 
Well, yeah, guys, yeah. Um, um, go ahead. Are, are you are you about to wrap it up, David? Well, do you have any? Uh, <laughs> other, other God, other I hope so. you want to. You know, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I got better things there. to do. Can, can we wrap this? I gotta go. I felt yeah. like we were just getting warmed up. But, I've had yeah, to pee right. for like fifteen minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> You got a glass sitting here that's got my name on it. I'm just, hey, go ahead. You're already attracting flies. What's yeah. a little pee? Yeah, take a break. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> or do you guys, oh, I mean, if you guys all want to wrap it up, I know it's a little later for you. Uh, I, for do me, but... I, I do have a serious question, though. Um, you know, I've read things here and there that they're saying that Alec Baldwin may be held responsible for this, but if there were people that were in charge of this weapon, I'm, I'm not sure if if he has any responsibility in that, even well, though I say a, he's a producer, though. Right. Yeah, as right, a gun right. person, you know, I would never point a gun at anyone just out of just out of my you know, awareness of guns. I would always clear a gun, check the barrel just myself. But if, if it's someone that's never been around a gun, you know, they're not going to have that wherewithal to do all of those things. And if someone hands them a gun and says, this is 100% safe, does any responsibility really fall on him at that point for, you know, pulling the trigger on that firearm? Dave, Dave, Dave you said something. I'm going to ask, I want to ask Dave to say something on this. He and I were having a conversation the other night on this. You had the theory, Dave, if you don't mind repeating about it, they'd given him that gun and told him to put it to his head. Do you remember what I'm talking about with that when you were talking about that with Alec Baldwin? I don't remember you. I don't remember ever saying anything about putting okay. it to his head. Well, we talked about it, and it seemed like I remember you saying, and, and I could be wrong. I hope I'm not, but I'm not trying to misspeak for you here. But if you if you get handed a gun on a movie set and they say, "Put that gun to your head and pretend to shoot yourself in the head," I think you're damn well going to go show me it's empty. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think at that point you're going to be far more interested in whether or not that gun's actually cold, as they called it, or not, if it's your safety that's involved. And that was something we yeah. talked about. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's a bit of a cartoon scenario. I mean, anybody who's dumb enough to put any weapon to their head that's, uh, you know, I mean, that's what happened to the, that jackass in the 80s. You know, mm. he's fucking around. Well, he knew there was a blank in the gun. He fucking... Killed himself well, inadvertently. I mean, every Christmas, yeah, every Christmas I watch Lethal Weapon, and what do you see in that? I'm using the fake gun again here because it's just like the one he had, a Beretta. What's he doing? He's putting the gun in his mouth. Yeah, you know? well, I think if I you handed me that gun that on either. set, <laughs> I know, but if but in uh, that movie when they did that, what I my first thought is I'd be going, you know, I hope the hell that's a rubber gun or something he's got, you know. And if it were right. me, I'd be like, I'd make sure it was. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my only thoughts at the end of the day are we have the technology to fake it and we can fake it. Well, we've all seen bad muzzle flashes. We've all seen bad CGI blood splatters, but that's the same reason we've seen bad CGI dinosaurs and bad CGI plane crashes because they fucking cheap out and they do the bare minimum. You can't tell me that you cannot replicate a muzzle flash and a blood splatter realistically, photorealistically, if you just put a little bit of money into it, but they don't. Mm -hmm. That's always, that's probably one of the last things to get addressed before a film is being rushed out. And yeah, right before the music score is getting done, or maybe at the same time, it's just, eh, just get these fucking, you know, so they look like crap a lot of times. But at the end of the day, this is my personal work environment. This is, this is where I live and this is where I do my work. And I see the stringent safety efforts made by every armor prop master. You know, I also see these yahoos who are like, well, if you just had an NRA guy on every set, you know, educating people and blah, blah, blah. It's like, fuck that. You know, if we've got right. stunts working where a guy's crashing a car through a wall, does that mean... I should be trained in how to safely extricate that guy from a fucking car crash in case things go wrong. If we're burning down a building, does that mean I need to be educated how to be a fucking fireman in case things go wrong? No, fuck right. that. No, 
I don't need to have gun training to be a fucking makeup guy. And we don't need guns anymore. We can fake it. Sometimes maybe even better than the real thing. So yeah, that's why my feeling is I, I think we just need to get rid of it. You know, and it's going to be a slow process. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. I hate to see anybody lose their job, but I lost a lot of work when computers came in. We used to actually build practical monsters, whether it was a guy in a suit or a big fucking hydraulic puppet or whatever. Worked in a lot of those films. Computers yep. came in. That work's all gone. That's progress. Pra practical still better, in my opinion. I agree. Yep. Practical yep. is still always. Always. The only, the only point always. I'm trying to make is, you know, when cars came in, there were a lot of horse people who were put out of work. So, <laughs> yeah, yes, definitely. there are going to be armors who lose their job or they're going to sidestep and do something else. And I do feel for them because, like I said, I've I've felt it in my own little branch of the film industry. Mm -hmm. But I just, yep. I, you know, I, I, don't, I just don't see the need for. I don't see the need for it anymore. Yeah, you're right. I can tell you right now where the pushback's going to come. Yeah, yeah. Quentin Tarantino. The, to go along with what you said, <laughs> Dave, what, I just saw a thing the other day when they did the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, they used practical effects on all the orcs. They put complete body suits on them and did the makeup and stuff. And when they did the Hobbit, they were all CGI. All of them. Well, they yeah, did. all the goblins, all the goblins. Yeah, all the goblins and the orcs. Yeah. But yeah, they said in the, like, in the, in the like trilogy, crap. in the trilogy, they did all practical and all that, but they went to complete CGI for the new one, for the, yeah. the Hobbit. Yeah. yeah. In the just original trilogy, I think the only thing was uh, Gollum. He was he was digital, yeah. but right. everything right. else was practical. Dave, just we're doing all practical here in Owensboro, so anytime. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. Hey, Look, I, we're I here for you, Dave. That's right. I hope you work on exposure points, but uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, well, there's uh, there's uh, there's a lot of things to work for that don't necessarily mean cash in hand. Oh, you know, there's, then. there's Eric, credits. There's they participation. Call me here, there's uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of things that that are negotiable points to make. Look, we'll out. pay for your gas, your and hotel, I have a workshop and we'll there. feed you. So. <laughs> You're gonna have to fly him in, buddy. Yeah, I was gonna say there. PJ Gas. I don't think he's gonna try all the way here. That's true. It's gonna be a we'll plane pay, trip. We'll, we'll pay for the gas <laughs> on the plane. That's I'm, what I'm, covered, I'm thinking. I'm covered. PJ's budget's gonna be just the jet fuel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, fill that bitch up. And get him here, <laughs> Eric. You're the numbers guy. Get it worked out. Okay. I'm covered for. Uh, I'm covered for lodging, and I'm covered for a workshop. Both of those things go. exist in Owensboro. I'm glad we go. have all this. You have a work. You have a workshop here in Owensboro. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! There I didn't know that. That's cool. Absolutely. Don't that's act like we weren't creeping around. I would like night. to see yeah. that sometime. <laughs> all right. Oh, goodness. Uh, well, I don't know when I'll be in town next, but we could probably make it happen. Oh, uh, that sounds good. Do I'd you guys both it. live in Owensboro? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we can make it happen. No problem. Sounds cool. good. Okay, so one one thing I need to interrupt real quick. Uh, PJ, if you need to actually step yeah, away for a second, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. mute your mic and I'm going to mute your video. So you just have to set it down. And when you're when you're done, you know where the restroom is here. Just go actually, right back I up. am going to have to get going. I have you're to gonna go Logan go. Up. Okay, yeah, That's I have fine. to pick Logan up from work. So all right, well we'll go ahead and, uh, and bring it. PJ, thank you so much for joining. No problem. Thank, thank you, you. Dave. Yeah, it was dude. nice to meet you officially. Yeah, Lewis, it was you. good seeing you again after good so long. Good seeing you, brother. Yeah, see you Aaron, lunch yeah. tomorrow, PJ. That's right. Oh yeah, we got that. Tony, as always, a pleasure. Everybody. David, thank you for having me. I don't know. It was it was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for your for your insight too. Do I got to yeah. take me out, or are you going to take me? I'm going to pull you out, dude. Right. Okay. Now. All right. So, so I, have, wow. I have, that was sudden. Have, <laughs> can I can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Based on like what Tony, I'm gonna said let him out. Ago. I'll be right back. You all can talk amongst yourselves. All Sorry, right. go ahead. Um, the Alec Baldwin situation. Now, are they are they going after him as the trigger puller, or are they going after him as the producer? Like, kind of, he's the manager on set. He should have been more in control of what was happening. That's where I'm a little confused on. Are they going after him as the trigger puller, or are they going after him as the producer? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, I, I'm not sure either. I just, 
When I first heard it, I mean, I just felt because what I've mind. understood is they're going after him more as the producer than the trigger for, puller. That's for being responsible of the, right. the whole everything. Right. Okay. Of of yeah. what went down, not him actually pulling the trigger and it happening, but how it got to the point when he pulled the trigger, it did happen. And that, that's where I'm a little confused. I don't know where they're looking at him at this for. From what I've seen in, in the media has been that right now, because it's, it's such an early investigation and there's a lot of moving parts and everybody's lawyering up and all this stuff going on from what I've heard. And I can tell you from what I've experienced in my news background, they're not looking at anyone right now as anything, whether or not there will be charges or who's going to be charged or for what, if there are charges, oh, okay. because right now they just don't know. They don't know what happened. They're trying to figure out what happened. And then once they establish the, all that pattern and they establish all the facts of the case, then determine if there was anybody who was at fault in some way negligent or what kind of charges to come up with. At least that's what I've understood so far. It's not if they're really going, quote unquote, after anybody. They're just right. going to wait and see whatever this comes out to be and then decide from there if charges will be filed and against whom. Well, the reason I ask that is I haven't really followed this pretty much from within the first few days after it happened. So I yeah. haven't heard a lot of this stuff. So I wasn't sure yeah. what's really happening with him and what they're trying to, if they were going at him or what and how. Well, my opinion on it, the way these things usually go, I think, I don't know who exactly, but I think some people will try to bring criminal charges against him. Mm -hmm. um, and that may or may not be, um, government officials, sheriff's department, uh, FBI, DA, whatever. Um, there, there will be attempts at criminal charges and there will certainly be a civil lawsuit. I think he civil. will probably, in my opinion, he'll probably beat the criminal charge. Um, although I do think he holds a certain amount of responsibility as not only the guy who did not check a gun that was put into his hands, but also right. as a producer. But I think from a civil perspective, he was a producer among something like eight or 10 producers who were trying to do way more than they had money for. And they hired, um, by all accounts, and again, this is a person I've not met, I don't know anything about, just hearsay, but they hired a first AD who was not the most pleasant person in the world and who had a reputation for rush, 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 rush. I don't care about protocol. We got to get the shot. We're going to lose the light, you know? Um, and then you combine that with a 24 year old woman um, who, however much training she had from her, you know, famous armor, her father, she's 24 years old. She's not going to, Unless she's got an extremely strong personality, she's not going to stand up to either an actor like Alec Baldwin or a first AD who's been in the business for many, many years. Yeah. When they're telling her, move your ass, she's going to move her ass. And that's when mistakes get made. Yeah. yeah. That's my opinion. You know, I will throw this out there to answer something for you, Eric. It just kind of made me think of and reminded me of is the case of what happened on Midnight Rider. You remember the case there where they were on the train tracks and they weren't supposed to be, and the girl was killed because the train came? Do you remember this case at all? Uh, I remember yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, Georgia. Now, that you, now that you bring it up, I do remember it, yes. Well, I'm sitting here looking. I looked that up while I'm sitting here, and I remember hearing about this. There were three people involved with that film, including the director, who were charged with invol involuntary manslaughter and criminal trespass. One of them got a sentence of 10 years, which he's expected to serve two years. Another one got 10 years of probation, at least out of it. And then there was a plea deal made on somebody else as well to uh, against it, but I, I can't find that. But anyway, there were people in that case who were held criminally negligent or liable for what happened. And then it mentions, you know, different lawsuits that have happened. So I know there'll be civil cases. That's just, I mean, <laughs> McDonald's and coffee. All I need to say, the right. lawsuit world. So, <laughs> Lewis, you know, anything do you know, can happen where you can sue. Yeah. Do let's... you know what those positions were on the show? Because I know the director was one who was convicted, and I think he got a year. 
I'm curious who uh, else was because if if one of them was not the first AD, I'd be fucking shocked. Well, let me look here. Director Randall Miller's the one that got ten years. The director oh, got was, ten wow. years on it. Was that probation so he, you said or no? According to this, according to what I'm reading here, uh, and again I'm looking online, so take that for what it will be. But it said that he got ten years, but was only expected to serve two. I think he, he served was, one. It said he was released in March of 2016. So he was in there for a little bit. And then the other one got 10 years of probation. The other two got 10 years probation. I'm trying to see, Dave, exactly what they were, who the people were, what their job titles were on the show. And I can't find it right off the top of here, Dave. Well, at the end of the day, in the Hollywood system, and this is another point I was hoping to make tonight, is something that I perceive as a tremendous, um, um, ah, what do you call it? Um, you know, when you're doing business with one person and you're doing business with another person and there's a crossover, um, come on, help me out boys. <laughs> a conflict yeah. of interest. Yeah, there okay. you go. There conflict go. of interest. That's what I'm looking for because the first AD's main job is to get the day, you know, he knows every shot we got to get. He's supposed to know every setup. Um, it's on the call sheet, every prop that's needed, every everything. Right. His main job is to get the day. Get the day. Keep it moving. Keep the crew together. Nobody gets distracted. When we're back from lunch, let's go, let's go, let's get it done. On the other hand, and this is the Hollywood system, he's also the primary safety officer on the set. Now tell me that's not a fucking <clears throat> conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. On the one it hand, is. it's hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And on the other hand, it's slow down. Let's take a look right. at this and make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. And just in my experience, I see a hell of a lot more hurry up, hurry up than I see slow down. Yeah. Right. So Dave, one of them was a producer, uh, Miller and Savin, which is his other person. Jody Savin were producers on the film and they were two of them. One of them got the probation, like I said, and the director had gotten the actual time. And then I'm looking up the third party now. Well, if it's not the first AD, I'd be, I'd be shocked. But then again, it was Georgia. So I don't know. They may have exactly. different huh. things. First AD. Yeah. Here's the four, actually what I'm finding out, Dave Miller, Savin, executive producer, <clears throat> Jay Sedrish and first assistant director, Hillary Schwartz. We're charged right. in voluntary manslaughter. So there you go. Well, that's just kind of how it works. It's like they're responsible for the safety of everyone on set. And, you know, I think it should be a completely separate job. I don't know yeah. why yeah. you've, why, I don't know how that even evolved. That's too much responsibility for one person to keep up with where it's going to make something easy fall through the cracks and when safety doesn't need to fall through the cracks. No. Well, yeah. Well, it's also just conflicting interests. Right. You know, on the one hand, you're trying to keep things going. And on the other hand, trying to slow things down enough to make sure it's safe. So right. I just, I don't see how, um, I don't know. It's like a husband and wife. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. The, the, the safety is going to fall through the cracks there because the AD is going to want to keep it rolling. So the safety is going to kind of fall to the wayside. Yeah, But if there was somebody yeah. else doing the safety, they'd be like, well, wait a minute, we need to make sure this is right before we move forward. But the AD on their own is going to go, well, we got to get this done. So it's kind of yeah. safety is going to be, it's going to be there, but it's going to be back here, you know? Well, I see it in a lot of different ways on set. Like whenever we have children on set, it's required by California state law that a certain amount of the time that those kids are on set, they're in school. You know, so we'll have a set teacher and they literally go into like a little trailer and they learn about math for a couple hours and then they come in and they shoot their scene and then they go back and they have an English lesson, whatever. But I've also seen ADs try to um, push into that. You know, I'll see mm. them. I've seen them take the teacher aside and say, you know what, we really got to get this shot right now. Let's just turn <laughs> off 20 minutes and I'll give it back to you later, you know. It's, it's always that push-pull going on. Right. And money, that's money, what worries money. me about guns on set is even though the protocols are extremely safe, 
you've got the human element. Right. And, and me, as just an individual, when we don't need it, we don't really need it. We can fake it. I don't want it anymore. You know? Right. I yeah. just don't. Yeah. So. It's, um, because you can, I mean, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to go back with Dave, and you were saying earlier that uh, you expected uh, somebody to really push back on guns on set with being Tarantino. Why do you, why do you say that? Because he's very much a practical guy, and he okay. uses a lot of guns. You know, I don't know. The only Hollywood personalities that I've heard sound off on this at all was uh, The Rock, you know, saying yep. that he and his production company will no longer use guns. And then I heard Matthew McConaughey make a statement saying that the system is very safe um, when people are doing their jobs right. And I agree with him on all of that. But what he's not acknowledging is the human factor, which is where things get fucked up and people get, you know, hurt or killed. So do you mean Rock's not going to use guns, period, or they're not going to use? No, no. He has said that any movie that he stars in, and he also has a production company called something like uh, Seven Bucks. Yeah, Seven Bucks. He said anything that his production company produces or any movie that he's in, they will not use real guns. It'll all be done. They'll It'll be shoot props. with airsoft or whatever, um, and they'll add the carnage in post, whether it's muzzle flashes or blood or whatever. Right. Yeah, and that's um, and. <clears throat> And he has the, I guess the, the pull, the clout to be able to do that. The clout, yes. Well, right. he's got yeah. the he's got the clout in his little corner. Yeah. Yep. I mean, he, he's you know he's a big star, but he's not by any means the, the star. be all end all of Hollywood. Right. 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 So where right. does where does a, a a franchise like John Wick fall in in this that's so gun heavy? Um, I don't know about this for sure, but I have a feeling that a lot of if you go back and look at some of the John Wick movies, I think a lot of them are digital, mm. um, you know, because there's shots where you can tell, certainly with the blood. Yeah. yeah. You know, the blood came about because producers were too fucking lazy to wait for, you know, blood hits, whether it's squibs or I haven't done squibs in years. I use air pressure, you know, whether it's shooting somebody in the head or in the chest, whatever blood. They don't want to do that because it's like if you do it once and they didn't get the exact shot, then it's a long time to reset. You got to clean up all the blood. You got to change the actor's costume. You got to re-rig whatever it was to go again. So they were like, fuck it. We don't want to wait on that. Let's do it in post. And then you see a lot of blood effects that look like crap. Yeah. Because it's, it's just some, is, yeah, it's some fucking 19-year-old. Yeah, yeah, and it's some idiot who doesn't have any skill with animation or anything else drawing blood. I think it would splatter this way and pasting it into a scene, and it looks like a big bowl of shit, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Is there a is there an example, Dave, of a, a movie that you can think of? Um, not necessarily one that's, you know, I'm not saying like a huge movie or anything, or not necessarily one you've worked on, maybe, or maybe a movie that you just, that you enjoy watching or, or have watched before that, that would be where they've used digital, I guess, properly to fool you to where you thought, okay, that, that looked pretty good, or that almost looks like I can't tell. And you're, you know, and you've done this for years. Well, not really, because I don't, I don't look at it that way most of the time when I'm watching right. a movie. It's like if it's egregiously bad, I'll notice it. Yeah, and I'll be like, okay. oh well, they cheaped out on that. They did cheap ass <laughs> digital that they, right? You know, they did in Bulgaria because that sounds silly, but there's a huge Bulgarian digital effects factory. They do the Sharknados and the. Oh you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm serious. They are cranking out shit right, left, and seven. And if you're a production who's running out of money and you need some some bullet hits, you know, send that footage over to Bulgaria. They'll knock it out in two weeks for next to nothing. I've fucking been there. I know the guy who used to run the goddamn thing in Bulgaria. So I'm not pulling this out of my ass. No, I'm I not, know. It, this isn't like second. I read it somewhere. 
I was like, I know this firsthand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. But cool. Uh, but on the other hand, I would say a movie like um, um, Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. You look at that movie, and I can't see how they possibly, especially in somebody in the hands of uh, uh, fucking Kubrick, I don't know. You look at that scene where they're trapped in that uh, courtyard or whatever, mm -hmm. shooting back mm -hmm. and forth. The one guy goes out, keeps getting shot by the sniper. You know, finally they find the sniper and it's some fucking 18-year-old kid, you know, some girl, 16-year-old girl, whatever. That right. they, you know. But you look at that sequence and I don't know how the fuck they could shoot that without functioning... Um, blanks blank guns because right. it's so gritty and it's so right down there in it they're you know they're barely designed shots they're certainly not like let's look this way now let's cut down that way you know and let, right. you know it's it, they're not it's fucking i don't know how you'd make a movie like that artificially right and i i have a feeling that tarantino would certainly be one of the big pushbacks i don't know who else you know and I, right. I haven't heard anything from Tarantino or his camp or anything like that. I don't know. I'm just saying. He's I, the kind of guy you would think that with his reputation would probably push back because he loves the realistic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, or just the, like the practical. Like movies like Saving Private Ryan and the movie Fury. There's some, some of the explosions and some of the, the bigger caliber weapons that they're using. I mean, that's, I, I don't know how some of that, if, if it was, you know, a post thing or what, but I don't know. There's so many rounds going off in those movies, explosions in the background and all this kind of stuff. The choreograph, the how, how, you know, it, it amazes me more people haven't gotten hurt. And I don't know how much of this is like animation or CGI or whatever, but... I can't well, that's imagine the trick. All, all of, I can't you know? imagine all of it's practical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. These days, it's very hard to tell. And I've I've worked on a right. lot of stuff <laughs> where, yes, when done right. But I've worked on shows where, all right, this the whole side of this building is going to explode, and basically all they have are a couple of you know, five gallon drum cut down into a barrel, and they've put a bunch of fucking uh, bits of styrofoam and dust and whatever, and they connect it to a big air cannon, and then in conjunction with that, they got some big orange lights, and when it's when it's blown out and coordinated properly, it looks like an explosion, to mm. which they can then digitally add sparks and flames and somebody flying through the air, but it's safe. It's a right. lot safer than fucking bringing in, well, let's bring in a bunch of TNT, it's all right, my boys know how to use it. <laughs> well, you know, you say you say that, David. It makes you, it makes you remember something back on uh, Lethal Weapon when no, it's not Lethal. Weapon, it was Die Hard when like the second floor or whatever, third floor gets blown out, big, big explosion there. In the, I remember uh, reading about that elevator out the show? windows. Yeah, when he, out the windows. Right, when he drops. The, oh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember reading about that the behind the scenes back years ago when he did that, and it just blew me away. I forget how many thousands of flash bulbs they had set up at the windows so they could trigger it and have it all just flash like a big explosion. Then they went back and shot a miniature, I think, with an explosion and blended them. Yeah. So you have that because they couldn't do that to the building where they were. No, because that was the Universal with, Black Tower. <laughs> right. And the it, they done the it with these bunch Black of flash Tower. bulbs. Wait, you so mean it was the just cool Yakutoma that they building? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Naka, the Nakatomi building is the Universal. It's on Universal's lot. It's the Black mm -hmm. Tower. It's where they, all the all the executives reign over their, <laughs> their fucking. Well, it was being built. It was being Naka built at the time. Yeah, it was, in, it was still being worked on. That's a yeah. real place, Dave. That's <laughs> yes, oh. yes, I know. And and <laughs> Nakatomi's Nakatomi's uh, nieces and nephews called the other day. They were asking how you were. <laughs> Good. Uh, PK, so motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it's what I <laughs> you beat me to it, you bastard. Oh, I almost did it that. Wait, we're going to do a slow fall. <laughs> like this. The Hans Gruber. 
Gruber. Hans oh, Gruber. I miss that guy. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Rickman was awesome. a great actor. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. <clears throat> was it? Well, gentlemen, I'm going to have. Oh, I'm yeah. going to have to cut out. So yeah, I apologize, quest. but I'm going to get off of here. Well, I think it's a, probably a good good place to yep. to wrap it up. Yeah, so, sounds good. Dave, thank you so much for uh, bringing this uh, subject to, to us to to do a show on, and I think it uh, I think it went quite well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fun and it was kind of nice. I mean, it 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 uh, it happened very quickly, which is like, wow, that's cool. You know, it wasn't like, well, next month let's do a thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just happened right away, which is kind of awesome. Well, you 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 brought to my attention. And I thought, well, let's 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 do it while the subject is still fresh and and mm. the investigation is still ongoing. That makes yeah. it more relevant, and then uh, this will this will go up. Uh, I'd say probably by tomorrow night. And I'll send I'll right. the links out to everybody so you'll know. <laughs> So, All right, I'll let my lawyers know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I said one thing. Was that movie company you talked about? They want Final Cut. Uh, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, actually, I I usually do give Dave Final Cut, but I think we're good. But usually, it was, it's, no, no, we, we did that. The, we did a, that on the very first one. I've never, that's true. That's I've never true. asked for that since then. Well, no, that was I only know, because I know, I've never done a never done a podcast. Well, that, I, I wanted and, to. And, and, and that, yeah. and, and if there's anything that comes up that's like a, um, you know, a movie that you're not supposed to talk about, which you already, you know, you already earlier in the, earlier in the, in the podcast, you mentioned, uh, I have a no disclosure, can't talk about that. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty on. good at self censoring. <laughs> you are, you are, you are, mm-hmm. except with happen. Cheney. <laughs> but yeah, that's but true. he and I have a pact because I know about mm-hmm. his pension for little i'll just leave it at that oh. <laughs> you know he's got all this blackmail stuff so i have to say yeah. shut up you know what i mean uh, yes i know oh, cool. exactly what you mean <laughs> all right yeah well, fellas, you've was... been around him longer than me buddy oh goodness <laughs> yeah that much Quite a while. Uh, yeah much That's no right. no oh dude thank you all very much tony yeah. Lewis, eric yeah. Yeah, good Thanks to meet for you. the invite, man. Appreciate it. Good, good yeah, being in here. Nice to meet you, Eric. Nice to and meet you, Lewis. I want to also thank uh, PJ for joining us. I know he had to, to step out early to, to get his son, but uh, I thought that was uh, it was good. Everybody had some some good comments and participation. Yeah. I thought it was yeah, very well I so done. Too. So yeah, I'm well. going to wrap it up by playing our outro video. If you want to stick around for a second, I'll be uh, we'll be here after after that. But okay. uh, guys, thank you all very much for joining us on this episode of Escape Pod. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of Escape Pod. If you enjoyed it, please like the episode and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to be a part of future podcasts, then email us at outbreakpodcast at gmail.com. And be sure to visit our website, outbreakpodcast.com, for more episodes, show notes, photos, and other podcasts on the Outbreak Podcasting Network. That's outbreakpodcast.com.